This is Crash Course in Enterprise Java Beans 3 with Rational Application Developer for WebSphere, Part 6 of 9, Implementing the Enterprise Java Bean with the Java Persistence API. Okay, now that we have our entity class and our database connections all set up, let's go ahead and fill in the view counter bean. So here's our view counter bean. Again, all we did basically was create it. It implements both our local and our remote interfaces, which of course have the same signatures, the same methods. And it is a stateless bean up here. And now we want to implement these two methods, get value and increment. The first thing we're going to need is an energy entity manager. So make a private entity manager. Call it EM, and then of course hold your mouse over the red underlined text and import Entity Manager from JavaX.Persistence. You don't want the IBM versions. Also, this Energy Manager needs a uh, annotation above it. Persistence context. We say unit name equals view counter, just like that. Now this name corresponds to the name that we typed in our persistence unit inside the persistence.xml file. You may want to pause this right now and go back just as a refresher. Um, but if you'll recall, we had a tag that said persistence hyphen unit name equals view counter with a capital V and a capital C. And so we match that right here. Then we hold our mouse over persistence context and import it from javax.persistence. And that's all the private member variables we're going to need. Now, let's start with this get value method, so delete that comment. We're going to make a JPA view counter entity, which of course is our entity class. I'll call it view counter like this. We want to set that equal to em.find. And find takes two parameters. The first parameter it takes is the view counter, the uh, entity class. So, which in this case, of course, is JPA view counter entity dot class. And the second thing it takes is a primary key. Now this parameter is of type object, but of course in this case it's going to be our page ID, so we'll pass in page ID, which is of course passed to get value as the parameter. And semicolon. Now if view counter is equal to null, then it's able, unable to find the view counter, and we'll just return zero, because we should always be able to find it since we added it manually to our database. Otherwise, we now want to em.clear. This wipes out some of the resources the Energy Manager had to create in order to get the view counter, and it you know, prepares it for another use. Um, for example, if the calling code calls get value and then later calls increment, you're going to have to clear the Energy Manager before we can uh, use, a, uh, use the Energy Manager again. Now note that this does not clear the view counter variable. Our view counter, sorry, view counter, of course, contains a value right here that it read from the database based on that page ID. And this value stays the same. It's already been retrieved. It does not get cleared by that call. So now we'll just want to return view counter .get value delete that return. And then what I want to do, just in case anything happens, it's good practice to surround everything in a try block. So let's create a new try block, drag everything into it, catch any exception, and just do a print stack trace, and then return zero. Then of course, after I moved that into the try block, some of these aren't indented correctly. Again, you can use the trick that I already mentioned, which which is Control Shift F to format. 
source code. Okay, we have our get value, which uses the em.find in order to find the value based on the page ID, primary key. And now increment is very similar. So I'm going to take this code that we wrote up here and just copy and paste it into increment and then work off of that. So we do first want to find the current count and return zero. But at this point now we want to do view counter dot set value and we'll set it to view counter dot get value plus one. Again, view counter dot get value was just retrieved up here um, after our em dot find operation. So we take the value increment one and set it into our view counter. And now in order to actually persist that in the database, right now after just calling set value, it's only saved in the view counter instance. So in order to save it to the database, you simply do em.flush. And this em.find call up here, when it returned the in view counter, the instance of JPA view counter entity, it kept track of that object. So once we change its value and call flush, it actually is able to look up that view counter object and take the value and save it into the database. And then we still do need to call clear to ready the, the entity manager for future operations and then return its value, which of course we set it to value plus one. So it will return the new value. And again, just catch any exceptions and return zero. So it's pretty simple code to implement a view, view counter like this. And in the next section, we will implement or we will create the web project and uh, have a servlet use this enterprise Java bean in order to actually have our blog post count the number of views.